and then they roll into making a deal, and then they shake hands, and then there's a freeze frame, and they're smiling at the camera. This writes itself. Good morning, everyone. Dave from the Wee Hours here today playing Showrunner, where I'm going to create a series episode by episode and see if anyone is interested in watching it, which is kind of what I do here on the channel. A brief bit of backstory on Showrunner. I watched Penge at the Geek Cupboard play this recently, about a week or so ago. As I'm recording this, he had played Showrunner, and I checked it out because it's Penge, and I generally watch whatever he's putting up, and I thought, gee, we've seen this game before, haven't we? I've, I can think of two or three, maybe four games that are very, very similar to Showrunner. So I was about to tune out, but then he did something very, very smart. He put me in the game. So I'm immediately attracted to shiny things or things that are about me. So I kept watching it and I realized Showrunner was much more intricate than I thought it was going to be. And it really held my attention. By the time he was done with the video, I really wanted to play this. So I hit up the developers and politely requested a key. I was very fortunate enough to get one. So thank you very much to those folks at Showrunner for gifting us a key to this so we can play it on the channel. I have left a link not only to Showrunner's Steam page, but also to Penge at the Geek Cupboard's play of this. You can go and check it out for yourself. We are going to create a television series, episode by episode, as I may have previously stated, but we've got a little bit of setup to do first. So I went through and played most of the tutorial. Shut up, I really tried this time. Most of the tutorial. I went through, I'm going to guesstimate about 60 to 62 percent of the tutorial and got kind of the basic idea of what we're going to be doing. And I had also watched the Geek Covered play it, so I had kind of a vague idea of what we're going to be doing. We're going to jump right into something as soon as I find the correct logo. Eh, it's good, but it's not great. Go back to the wolf. No, that's, that's a little too something. No, no. Ooh. I like the all-seeing camera eye. It looks sinister. Can we get a different background on? Yes, there we go. That looks very, very sinister. I think that'll do just fine for Daveco Productions. That's what we are calling our studio here. All-seeing sinister camera eye, watching everybody at all times. Now, 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 we have to create a show. So when Penge did it, he did a very tense medical drama. I think we're going to go off in a completely different direction here, because without revealing my actual age, I am certainly a, a child of the 80s, and the 80s was a grand time for television. Just a, a wonderful panorama of terrible, terrible, just awful, awful television. And one of the things that we excelled at in the 80s was comedy. You were not going to find a better period of time than the 80s for comedy, and the pinnacle of the 80s was, of course, the buddy comedy. Two characters, one of them irreverent and wacky, one of them sensible and down to earth. It's basically all we did in the 80s, so I think we are going to go with a comedy for this. Now, I should probably pay vague attention to some of the mechanics of this game. So what is going to be very important, stat importance, it says the word important, well it doesn't, but it mostly says the word important right here, is obviously comedy for a comedy, and characters. Again, the two buddy cat comedy characters, one of them irreverent and wacky, one of them sensible and down to earth. We have a tremendous amount of themes we can go with here. Office, post-apocalyptic, superhero, historical, supernatural. I like the idea of that. But where this is going to be a buddy comedy, I think we're going to spin off to fantasy. We're going to go with fantasy here. A fantasy buddy comedy, and I know exactly what we're calling this. With a nod to one of the demonstrably worst shows of the 80s, My Two Orcs. Okay, My Two Orcs. It's going to be two orcs. I don't know exactly what it is that they do, but one of them is irreverent and wacky, and one of them is sensible and down to earth. It's basically... It's basically perfect strangers, except they're not strangers. They know each other very, very well. And it's my two orcs. Let's go ahead and create our brand new show here. Now we got to set up a contract here. So who's going to be paying for this nonsense? DH is going to give us a thousand for the season, 150 per episode, 15 for every quarter million viewers, 20 for every half star, and a bonus payment for every two stars above an average review 
of 75. Okay, that's a lot of information there. Can we just go with who looks like they have really, really high numbers? Ah, Streamwatch here, they're gonna have us 1250. But they want more viewers to give us any kind of bonus. So they want half a million and they're only gonna give us 25. Quarter million, we can get 15. So actually pound for pound, if we got half a million viewers, we should go with DH here. Let me just spin through this, see if anyone's offering something spectacular. I think Rune here is the way we're going. So they're gonna give us 1250 for the season. Now they don't pay us as much per episode, but they are gonna pay us for every quarter million viewers, that 15. Now very tough to get the bonus payment on these guys. Four stars above an average review for my two orcs. You think that's gonna happen? No, probably not, but we're gonna sign that contract. Welcome to Showrunner, thank you so much. And it looks like our set is gonna be sort of a medieval fantasy in here. We got some kegs of, I assume, mead. That's all people drank in a fantasy setting. One full, one empty cup, so my two orcs right there. One of them, irreverent and wacky, probably drained his cup. The other one, sensible and down to earth, and said, no, 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 I'm driving tonight. A horse, but I'm driving tonight. I won't have that cup of mead. All right, I think we got to get started on hiring some staff. So let's, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we start with a writer. Because ain't nothing happening around here until we hire a writer. Staff search. All right. Let me see what I can remember here. This is going to cost us some money. 20 money to find anyone at all here. So what have I got? I've got money. I've got script points. Every time I complete an episode, I'm going to get some script points. And I've got persona points. Every time I complete an episode of the show... The amount earned can be affected by staff skills, character perks, and room items. And they're spent whenever I want to create a new character or upgrade a character from support to main. Oh, so I could have a support character, but he gets more and more popular as the series goes on, and he ends up becoming a main character. Oh, that's like buddy comedy gold. Okay, Reese, what can you show me here? You have basically no imagination at all. E plus on imagination. That is terrible. You're you're not completely ignorant of dialogue and your work rate is okay. What else could we find here? You have more imagination, Dylan. But your work rate is terrible. Wow, you are just awful. You are not going to get this written. I'm not expecting anything spectacular here. These are the bottom of the barrel people. You have no imagination, but you're not terrible at dialogue. Carlos, uh, Brooke, Richard. Actually, Richard... Your imagination is terrible, but everything else is at least a D. You only want nine. Oh, that's great, because I don't have a lot of money, man. I got like 1230 in the bank, Richard. Uh, congratulations, you're hired for my two orcs. I suppose I could hire more writers, but you know, where this is the very first show, I don't think we really need to do that. That's a room, I know what that is. We gotta create some characters here. Okay, some characters, let's create a character. I've already got an idea for this, so what have we got here? We've got hero, anti-hero, underdog, villain, trickster, genius, etc., 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 and they're all going to have different attributes. So if I went with hero, they're going to be high on emotional, high on lawful, not so much on quirky versus conventional. They're kind of right in the middle for that. Let me switch it up. What would underdog look like? Okay, much more chaotic, much more disagreeable, an introvert, very quirky. Ooh, that does kind of scream buddy comedy, doesn't it? Very, a little lazy. That also screams buddy comedy. Hmm, I'm liking the look of this. Very chaotic. Ooh, I think, I think that is our quirky, unconventional, irreverent and wacky first star of the show. Well, of course it was going to be me. Who else do you think it is? There you go. I am the... The underdog here, a main character, definitely, but I want a little bit more than that. I know I can't afford to be doing any of this, but I want to make the show that I want to make. Now, talk to me about Sage. Very lawful, uh, kind of between personable and disagreeable, introvert, conventional. Okay, that's definitely the sensible one of the two. Diligent, oh, diligent. Sensible and down to earth. That's exactly what I want. Show me, say, scientist I'm just not feeling. Very diligent, very lawful, but introvert and conventional. What about, I don't know, what about rogue? What does that give me? Extrovert, very quirky. No, I think we got to go back to sage. 
because that balances the buddy comedy here. Very lawful, very diligent. Everything else is kind of meh, sort of in the middle here. I'd love it if they were a little bit more logical and maybe a little bit more on extrovert, but this is what it is. And as Penge was nice enough to put me in his show, I'm putting him in my show, but at least here he gets to be a main character. Penge Cupboard, our sage, to balance off Dave, the irreverent and wacky member of this buddy comedy. Oh, this is good. This is good, good stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and create and cast this now. We need some actors in here. Okay, Jaden, what exactly is it that you do around here? Now, what I need to do is get Jaden to match up with some of the traits of the character. All right, so Penge Cupboard here. You need to be, you're not really cutting it, Jaden. Maybe we can revisit your resume or headshots or whatever it is actors do. We're going to revisit all of that for my character. But for right now, let's see if we can get somebody else who might match up a little bit more with the character of Penge Cupboard. This is a lot better, actually. The only thing we're really slacking on here is the introvert versus extrovert thing. Other than that, Brady Kelly here, 93%. He basically is Penge Cupboard. Now, he's a terrible actor, but, you know, I'll learn to cope with that. He'll get better over time. Um, what are we doing here? Well, you know what? If, if it's going to be somebody from the Geek Cupboard, it's, it's obviously got to have a hat. So, where, where is where is hats? I want... No, that's a face item. There. It's the one that says hats, Dave. Uh, not so much with the helmet. Cowboy hat, I'm, I'm liking that, but it's got to be something sensible. That's... That's sort of vaguely sensible. A baseball cap. That is very, very sensible. That's extremely sensible. Show me what else you've got there. A different baseball cap. Uh, sort of a fedora thing. Uh, maybe not on that. No. I know there probably wouldn't be baseball caps in a fantasy setting, but it's got to be sensible. There is literally nothing more sensible than a scarf. It is nature's most perfect sensible item. A, that is it. That's it right there. A scarf. I don't care that it's a fantasy setting. He's wearing a scarf. It's very, very sensible. Um, pants I'm kind of meh about. I think we can go with virtually anything for this. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that works. That works. Let's get some more sensible shoes. There we go. Extremely sensible shoes there. Um, show me back items because back items, it is a fantasy setting. I think everyone should be wearing a cape. So we're going to have you wear a cape. It's, it's totally sensible, and the cape is a sensible cape that is very, very down-to-earth and does the proper things at all times. Now, who can we get to play me? Faith, um, you're not bad. I mean, 72% matchup on that. Uh, you are 75, Roslyn, and you actually, apart from the disagreeable personable thing, you match up not so bad. 52%, oh, Zamina. Zamina, Zamina, this is not the right audition for you. You're just not... Zamina, you're not really feeling the character. I don't I don't think this is the right one for you. 82% on Sarah Brown. Not bad. Not bad. And check out Sarah. Sarah could play virtually anything within this spectrum. And this one, for that matter. I have no idea if later on we can change these people's roles. I don't know how this goes. I watched Penge play it and said, yeah, I want to play this. So I have no idea what the long-term implications of these people are. But boy, she could play anything in this range. You have great range, Sarah. I believe that's something that you say to actors. And going through the rest of them, Sarah's pretty much it. Sarah's the highest rated one that we have. What is your personality here? You're fiery. Ooh. I should have checked what the other actor's personality was. Staff that work together with complementary personalities are more likely to have their chemistry increase rather than decrease. Okay. Well, I didn't check what the other actor was, but you're fiery. That's fine. And what's your class? You're an orator. All right. Actors of this class tend to have the following strengths, and we'd be very weak at craft, strong at charisma. Well, that's got to be good for a comedy. Strong on delivery and weak on work rate. I, I think it's got to be Sarah here. Um, I gotta, I gotta make Sarah, well, irreverent and wacky, really, don't I? So Sarah's gonna wear sort of a bandit mask here, and then probably a cowboy hat. Yep, yep, we're liking this. Now, let's make sure you've got a cape on, because everybody gets cape here. Is that a cape? Okay, that is, in fact, a cape. Good. Um, let's get something irreverent and wacky here. That's pretty good. 
I don't hate that. What else can you show me in irreverent and wacky? Ooh, a suit of armor. It is a fantasy setting. It is a fan. We should probably have something along those lines. Show me pants. Yep, I'm in. Cowboy hat, bandit mask, suit of armor up top, running shorts down below. So, you know, it's kind of like a clothing mullet. It's business up top, it's a party down below, and then just regular old sneakers there. We are definitely going to confirm that. All right, we got our two characters. Two main characters, anyway. I don't think I'll do support right now until, well, I have any sort of money or we've made any sort of television show. I notice you're not writing anything. You're my writer, right? Yeah, you're, you're my writer. You should probably, like, write things. So, create an episode. Let's assign Richard to this. Thank you very much. All right. This is where it's going to get complicated, isn't it? Now I actually have to pay attention to the mechanics and not just mouth off about my buddy comedy here. Unlock one theme each episode before one, two, three, and five in the season. All right. So what what is going to go here? If I do loss, every card played adds one extra character point. Okay, that could be a good one. It doesn't really fit with a comedy, but it could... Do I have anything over here? I do. Rebellion, ah, guilt, society, conspiracy? None of these scream buddy comedy to me. Maybe family. Every card with the character points played has a 33% chance to increase show popularity. Well, that's got to be good, right? That's got to be a good thing. I'm going to select... I'm going to select family, I think. Did I do that? I don't think I did that. Now, obviously, the first show in any series is always called Pilot, because nobody's sure if it's going to get picked up for a season or if anyone's going to care about it. So I've got to put in some cards here. Let me remember how this goes. These cost me time points. I got 10 of them. And this is like, say, New Arrival. That's going to cost me two right there. That's going to give me plot, characters, and drama. Not really focused on drama. I want characters and comedy. Characters and comedy are going to be my big things here. Do I have... Yeah, I've got some comedy down here. That gives me characters and comedy. So we could open with an acute observation. Like, boy... Aren't these two complete polar opposites very odd when put together? I wonder if they'll make a go of it in this strange new fantasy city. Can they learn to get along? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, comedy down here with some action. Unconvincing display. No, let's start with an acute observation. In that, why are these two characters together? That's a very acute observation. Now, can we get some more comedy in here? Again, I could go to Unconvincing Display. It gives me action that I don't really need. And that costs me three time points there. What can you show me? Again, comedy and characters. What can you show me in characters here? Not a lot. Not a lot here. I've got a little bit of character here in a group discussion. A friendly chat. Oh, friendly chat. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so they, they move in together in a fantasy setting. Some sort of tavern or they own the tavern. Oh my god, it's all coming together. So they've never met each other in their life, and they both... This is brilliant. This is so 80s. It's amazing. Wait till you check this out. Okay, okay, okay. Unbeknownst to our characters, they are in fact half-brothers. They've never met each other in their lives, but they've been gifted this tavern due to their, you know, deceased relative who willed it to them, in his will, you know, when you die, you like say, hey, here, have my stuff. That's kind of how a will works. But they've never met each other. They're totally polar opposites. This is all coming together now. So let's slide into unconvincing display. So acute observation and then a friendly chat. They meet and they're like, hey, we own this tavern together. We're complete polar opposites. I'm sensible and down to earth. You're irreverent and wacky. Can we make this tavern work? And then unconvincing display, they can't. Their first day in business is just complete train wreck, dumpster fire. They cannot get it together. What have I got left for time points uh, for? I sh again, I should probably be paying attention to the mechanics, but I'm way more into the plot of my buddy comedy here. All right, if I take group discussion, that leaves me two time points left. And then I could go into making a deal. This, this pilot is just writing itself. Richard, don't even bother. I got this one for you, man. So, friendly chat, can we get along? Unconvincing display, they totally can't. Their first day in business as owners of this new tavern are, it's a complete train wreck. Group discussion, they get together in like the last, let's see, a sitcom's gonna run for 22 minutes when you take out the commercials. So in like the last 
seven minutes, they come down and they, they're like, oh my god, our first day in business was awful. Totally. I'm sorry if you actually tuned in to learn how the game is played, but I'm way more into the plot of my, my, my buddy comedy here. So group discussion, in the last seven minutes of those 22, they come together and they're like, okay, we've got to try and make this work. You know, we're stuck here with this, with this fantasy tavern here. And then they roll into making a deal and then they shake hands and then there's a freeze frame and they're smiling at the camera. This writes itself. And obviously, let's get our characters in here. Dave and Penge Cupboard, wacky and irreverent, sensible and down to earth. Let's complete that. Now we've got to actually put all of this together, uh, which means I need to hire some people. I need a director of some sort. Somebody's got to put this nonsense together. So let's get a level one search here. Harmony, um, you're pretty good at, well, pretty good. You're terrible at vision and storytelling, but you're not the absolute worst. You're awful. You're pretty awful. You're mostly awful. Uh, you're basically awful. Go to... Wait, your name is Quasar? Your name is Quasar. I... I'm hiring him. I don't care if he's terrible. His name is Quasar. We're, we're hiring Quasar just because his name is Quasar. You'll get better. But you kick down the door of my production studio, Dave Co. Productions here, and you're like, I'm Quasar, your director. I'm going to tell you right now, those actors are paying attention to that man. And then we need some editors here. So sure, a level one search of an editor. Uh, unless you're coming in with a really, really cool name. What is your thing here? You're a wizard. Again, I should probably be paying attention to the mechanics of the game, but, you know, my two orcs. It's writing itself. Your pacing is weak. Your technical is very strong. Clarity is weak and work rate is average, and you are fluid. You work best with down-to-earth. Well, that's going to be irrelevant right now because you're going to be the only editor, but I'll have to keep stuff like that in mind. I also should have gone back and checked the traits of both of my actors to see if they're complementary. They shouldn't be. I doubt they are. Uh, who else can you show me here? You're fiery, and what is your thing? You're a dynamo. Pacing is average. Technical and clarity is weak. Your work rate is very strong. So you're going to pump this out quickly, but you're not very good at it. Show me, what are you? An assembler. Average weak, very strong and weak. Very strong on clarity. I do, Elizabeth, I do need someone who understands the vision of my two orcs. So that is, um, that's you. And then a crew, I don't think anyone largely cares about the crew. You're a specialist. Actually, your technical is very strong for a D plus. Apparently it's very strong. Teamwork is terrible, but you're fluid. Okay, uh, you're hired. How much money do I have left? I'm, I'm okay right now. Wow, Jayla, you only want one bit of money. Oh, look at you, Jayla. What is your thing here? Down to earth. Okay, and you are a generator. So you have a good work rate, which Giovanni doesn't. That might actually kind of pick up the pace there. I'm going to hire you for the crew here. Okay, I think... We are. We have a crew. We have a director. They're over here going, what? what is this insane show that we have just put together? You got some coffee in your hand. You're going to fit right in. Uh, you're doing whatever it is you're doing down here. I think we are ready to start writing this. So do we actually, how about we do this? We turn the game on. Yeah, I know. It's like 20 minutes in and I haven't actually hit play yet. I'm way too excited about My Two Orcs. This thing is just brilliant. It's a it's a subtle form of genius. It's terribly, terribly 80s. Let's get this going a little bit faster. So my man down here. Yeah, you're writing your thing. Look at that. Ten comedy points right there. I told you, man. This thing writes itself. I also noticed you're wearing like, like really weird. Pa are, I, I can only do the. Fr are you expecting a flood? Seven comedy. This thing is just genius. Okay, writing is done. Select a director. Obviously, Quasar, the director. Off you go, Chief. And then both of our crew members, in you go. Now, are we filming? We are filming. Look at this. This is perfect. Where's my hat? I thought I had a hat. Why do I not have a hat on? Why does nobody have a hat on? I specific... Where is my director? Where is Quasar? Quasar, I specifically asked for hats. Don't tell me this is a crew problem. I guess this guy was in charge of hats. Comedy shooting right up here. Loving this. Yep, more comedy over there. More comedy over here. This thing is... This thing's gonna be big. All right, we've finished filming. Let's get an editor in here. Elizabeth, go do your thing over here. Are you gonna... Yeah, you're down here doing your little editing thing. You're getting some comedy points in there. You're actually only typing at one tiny corner of the keyboard. Not really sure what's up with that. That's like the JKLM section of the keyboard. 
You got two points in something that I don't immediately recall. Go for the banana peel one. That's what we're shooting for here, Elizabeth. Now, while I'm doing all of this, can I research stuff? Is that a thing I can do? Pick a card set. Well, comedy. Obviously, I want, a, I want comedy. So this cost me 50 of those script points. Okay, I've only got 100 right now. I'm going to queue up one of them. A running joke. Oh my god, a running joke. I have to have a running joke. There is nothing more 80s than running joke. Oh, Bronson Pinchot, I'm looking in your direction. Running joke. Yeah, I'm taking it. I don't care. I, I don't care how much it costs me. There's, there's no... Wow. Half a star, huh? Half a star. Okay, you know what? It's the pilot. It's the pilot. Uh, throw this into pause mode. It's the pilot. People don't really know what to make of my two orcs. And you know what? Let me be brutally honest. I never watch pilot episodes. Even when I'm binge watching something, I skip episode one because I don't care. I just want to get into the show. So I'm assuming that everyone watching my two orcs is me. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to, I'll just, I'll wait until it gets going. They really get the characters established. That's all we're, this is just a pilot. You know what? Half a star is fine. A million people watched my two orcs. Got 125 money for that too. Fame up two. Nice. And characters up one. I like it. How did we broadly do? Yeah, obviously, big on comedy. No surprise there. And big on characters. Great. That's exactly what we wanted. Well, let's roll right into episode two, and we do have to select a theme. I think it's a little early for love. That's going to be late season on that one. One of the characters will develop a love interest. It'll be a side character who may eventually become a main character, depending on how long the series goes on. Coming of age, not bad. I don't hate that. Again, I'm, I'm looking at family down here. Society, rebellion, no, it, it's not any of this. Redemption? Character score of script. I, I should be looking at what the rewards are, but I'm really looking at how does this affect my two orcs. If the character score of script exceeds 10, then add 5 plot points. Well, we do very well on character. That's kind of our thing. So it is very highly likely that we will receive that reward like that. But every card with character points has a 33% chance to increase the show popularity by one. Good and evil drama. We're not doing any drama. No, nope, drama doesn't exist around here. I could just go with a flat character XP. Why am I only being pushed towards loss? Why is this highlighted? If I click this, I don't want to click that. I want that one. Okay, I don't know, but we're apparently it's a law. Okay, all right, I've written it. Never mind, I've written it. I figured it out. I figured it out. Okay, so the second episode, the second episode of My Two Orcs is them coming to terms with the fact that they are indeed half-brothers who have never met, and they, they go and they visit the grave of, of their father, I guess, I assume. Uncle, I don't know, it would, however family things work. But long story short, we're going to have a little bit of sadness as they come to terms with the fact that they are family who have never met. Now, what sucks is a lot of our stuff is on cooldown, so we can't use any of those cards that we just used, but I do have Running Joke available. I'm not going to open with Running Joke. Let's open with New Arrival. Got it. I already got it. I already got it. This thing writes itself. Why is nobody producing my two orcs? New Arrival is going to be a staff member for the tavern because they recognize that their first day in business when they tried to do it all by themselves was total garbage. So they're going to hire somebody, a new arrival. I might have to create a new character here. Then we'll go into running joke. I'm not sure what the running joke is yet. I'm going to have to have a bit of a vision on that, but there will be a running joke. I will be using this card. I know I won't be able to use it every single episode, but I'd like to use it every single episode. How many time points do I have left? I should probably pay attention to that. I've got five left. Okay. And we're kind of out of things that are going to give us any any real bonus. What else is vaguely important? Plot. Okay, so plot would be a pretty good thing to have here. Got plus one plot there. That's not bad. Plus two plot on establishing the location. Uh, yeah, let's do that. And that can be, you know, sort of a pan out of the fantasy tavern. That's it. That's all I've got. It's a brief episode. It's, a, it's, it's you know what? This is... This is that establishing episode where the people who either did or did not watch the pilot go, you know what? You know what? I could, I could sit down and watch a little more of this. So the new hire, there we go. It's going to be, I don't know, like a bar. It's a, it's a bartender. Of course it is. We're going to cheers this up here. It's going to be a comedy bartender. Uh, sure. Yes, uh, definitely us in there. I really got to get a support character soon. 
I've got to I've got to flesh out this comedy bartender here. Uh, complete that. Actually, get writing. Let's actually get this moving here. Thank you very much. Now, in the meantime, what could I be researching here? How about another one? A surreal sequence. Oh, okay. So the dream episode. That's going to be a lot later in the series. That's when the series totally jumps the shark. Not completely. The dream sequence is not completely jumping the shark. There are other things that jump a lot harder than that. Uh, but I don't have any points to research anything else, so it's completely pointless. Let's go. It is pointless. See, it's pointless. You see what I did there? Look at this. I'm writing comedy all day. I should, I should be Quasar, frankly. All right. Well, we finished, we finished the writing. So let's get Quasar into direct. And then obviously our two crew members there. Yep, we're in. We're in. We're doing things. I got to get. I, okay. 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 Showrunner. If I put a support character in here and you put them behind the bar, you are game of the year. All right. Elizabeth, get in there and edit that nonsense, please. The staff are on break. Yep. The writer's just chilling out over here. I can, as I recall, I can upgrade these rooms. Well, first of all, I can change the color of the Wow. That is hideous. That is just one of the worst colors I've ever seen in my life. So we're keeping that. Uh, that is a little better. All right. doesn't look like I can upgrade it right now. That's probably down the road. Maybe some sort of research thing that I didn't really pay attention to. Uh, what can I do in here? Actually, can I do anything with the set? Not yet. But the fact that there's a card for this, a little tab for this, tells me I probably can at some point. Uh, let's flip this around to that, and let's flip that around to this. Nope, that's hideous. Let's do some... Oh, hi, my show's over. Um, again, half... half. You know what? We're just getting warmed up. Didn't actually do that great on comedy, did we? Yep, didn't have any of those good comedy cards. All right, characters, we did great. We did fantastic on that. Fame up, characters up. Still a million viewers. There's a million people who are checking out my two orcs. All right, I got to get the bartender in here. So let's create a new character. Ooh, okay. Sidekick? Is he really a sidekick, per se? Disagreeable? No, he's very, very personable. Well, that is kind of a bartender. Kind of mid-range between lazy and diligent. I'd like a little more quirky. How about Joker? Ooh, I like that. Very personable, very quirky. And kind of mid-range between lazy and diligent. Show me Fool. Fool is super quirky, super emotional. No, I think Joker. This is this is somebody we're going to have to play off of and who's going to play off of us. So Joker for the comedy bartender who's not going to be called Brody. That's completely ridiculous. Why would you call somebody Brody? Sorry to any viewers who are named Brody. Uh, but our character is going to be called Tim. Tim, our comedy bartender here. I do not have enough points to create this. I probably should have looked at that. Okay, Tim is still in embryo. However, um, Penge Cupboard has leveled up. You've leveled up here. All right, what could we do with that? We've got a new trait here. Mysterious, okay. Gain popularity by 10%, but reduces your XP gain. That's not too bad. I would love something that puts you really in range of the introvert thing. Arrogant, you're going to lose popularity but gain XP. Cruel, add three drama points. No, that's not right at all. Loyal, chance to lose popularity decreased by 5%. Oh, so you can lose popularity. Huh. The viewers just hate you. Like We don't like this character anymore. Oh, or, the, or the actor. It's the character. We're leveling up the character, not the actor. Right, leader, XP gain up for everyone else. Three character points to any script when they appear in an episode. That would be really handy for us because we want character points or three comedy points. And look at that icon. How can you how can you turn down that icon? In fact, that icon right there, that is 80s comedy. If you flash that icon up, I'm gonna say that's an 80s comedy. I don't know which one. It could be different strokes. It could be, I don't know what else, Charles in charge, who's the boss, anything. You look, you show me that icon. That is 80s comedy. So you are going to be witty. Yes, please. Now the studio leveling up. What do we do with that? I could have an extra writer and an extra d director. Oh, Quasar ain't having that. Yeah, no, Quasar is a one-man show at Dave Co. Productions here. Okay, let's get to writing the next episode. I got to focus on these persona points. I got to get another character in here. So every time I complete an episode, 
and they'll be affected by staff skills, character perks, etc., etc., etc. Okay, create another episode. Richard, you're on board. Let's get that going. Ah, yeah, it is episode three, so I can select a thing. Looks like I only have revenge, family... Ah, okay, so I, these are the only ones I can afford. That's why I was probably being led down that path. I don't look at things, really, when I'm playing a game. Just so as you know. Like, if you're there screaming at the screen going, why doesn't he see this? It's because I legitimately don't. I'm just not paying attention. I'm way, way more excited about the plot of my two orcs. I could get any of these, but I kind of don't want to spend those persona points because I want to get a new character in here. What's low rent in Persona? Neither of these. Boy, that family one. I can't afford that. That is really good. 33% chance to increase the show popularity by one with every card with character points. And we're going to be playing cards with character points. I don't want to spend it, but I'm going to spend it. Now, I know I said it's a little early for the Dream Sequence episode, but I do have Surreal Experience up and ready to go, and that is three comedy points right there. So I think uh, I think Penge Cupboard's character is going to wake up from some sort of freaky dream where he doesn't have to put up with my nonsense all day and Tim the bartender doesn't exist. He's just leading his normal, sensible very controlled life somewhere else as an orc in an orc camp, but a very sensible orc camp where um, things are just very chill and nobody does anything irreverent or wacky. And then he wakes up and he's like, oh no, I'm actually still in this tavern that I have been left by my my father that I didn't know I had a half-brother. Oh no, it's still all true. Oh yeah, this just writes itself. This just writes itself. Uh, let's go into unconvincing display. Oh, that does not leave me a lot of points left, though. Boy, that surreal sequence is costly. I got three points left. Take that out. Let's see if I can manage this a little bit better. I probably can't, but let's see if I can manage this. So two on acute. Okay, group, actually, friendly chat is plus two character points for only one thing. Oh, yeah, give me that. So Penge Cupboard wakes up from the, the, the dream and goes, Oh, no, I'm still in the tavern! And then goes downstairs for orc breakfast, whatever that may be, probably bacon, uh, and then has a friendly chat with my character about, Oh, wow, wow, we still own this bar, and we've hired a guy named Tim, but we can't afford to actually have him come in and work yet. So with five left, I could get acute observation and unconvincing display, and that would be a hefty amount of comedy for this episode. It's not going to leave me much for the next episode. I'm going to have to think about that. Let me actually briefly have an aside with myself about the concept of game mechanics. I should probably not use some of these because I need them in the next episode. So I'm going in going, yeah, put all the comedy and character stuff in, and then I don't have any left for the next episode. Although I can, you know, research some. We'll get more cards as things go along. So what if, what if we did something different? How about we did, back to making a deal? Okay, the, the plot Richard is coming together. Let me spell out the plot for you here. So Penge Cupboard wakes up from the dream and is like, oh no, I really do own a fantasy tavern. I don't really want to do this. I want to be back in my sensible orc colony. Goes downstairs for orc breakfast, again, probably bacon, and has a chat with my character. And then they make a deal. They're like, you know what? Dream sequence or not, we got to pull this together. We got to find a way to afford to have Tim come in so he can be our crazy bartender. So we, we got to make this happen. There's making a deal right there. I'm going to save these two comedy points for the next episode because I don't want to lose all the comedy. Tense meeting, I don't need that. Plot and drama does nothing for me. I guess we'll go into group discussion. And then maybe the group discussion is Tim outside, because he's not coming in until he's getting paid, uh, saying, yeah, I, I could work for you if you if you learn how to pay me. Okay, Richard's off and running. He's got things going here on It Was All a Dream. Uh, the rest of the crew is just sort of hanging out, drinking coffee, doing not much of anything. Where's my, where's my actors? There we are. Yep. Still looking irreverent and wacky, standing behind the couch in those shorts. I thought I had a hat. Can I not give my... Where did my hat go? I have a hat here. Why do I not have a hat here? The hat thing was actually rather important. Okay, Quasar's on deck. The crew is doing their sort of camera things here. I'm seeing a lot of comedy and characters coming in here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Seven on comedy, two on characters. This is exactly what we need for my two orcs. 
I'm hoping on this one, third episode, I'm hoping the viewers of My Two Orcs are like, you know what? I am mildly emotionally invested in these characters. They're not completely terrible. I could see myself sitting down every week and watching this. Oh, for the younger viewers, by the way, let me explain what I meant by that. So in the past, you didn't sit down and watch an entire season in one night. You actually had to wait a week until the next episode came out. It was a dark time. It was a dark, scary time, but you'd watch an episode of My Two Orcs and it would end. And you, you would be laughing and crying at the same time because of all the emotional connection you had with the characters. And then, okay, so this is going to seem strange. The next episode would not come out for a week, like a real life week. It wouldn't just immediately pop up and go, next episode, here you go. No, it was a very, it was a strange dark time in our history. Now we're just kind of hovering on that half star just kind of sitting on that half star. I gotta get more of those persona points. Let's get that going. Okay, it's not what I want, but we're keeping the viewers. Okay, the viewer thing seems to be stable. 109 out of what? A thousand. Right, so 109 is actually nowhere nearly as good as I wanted it to be. Okay, um, but you know what? It's not zero. It's not, we're not getting canceled, tell you that. And that's probably an excellent place to call it on Showrunner for today. We're definitely coming back to this. I need to finish out the season of My Two Orcs. I'm gonna, I don't know about you, but I personally am emotionally invested in this story, in the cast, in the characters. This is, this is comedy genius. If you put this show in like 1986, this would, well, you'd probably get about two seasons out of it, then it would get canceled. But, it would be there. It would exist. This is an absolute 80s comedy gold masterpiece. My two orcs. We are definitely coming back to this. Somehow I'm going to afford Tim the bartender. We'll get him to work here somewhere. But guys, do please let me know what you're thinking of Showrunner. And hey, if you enjoyed the video, do please leave a like down below. It does cheer me up. No end when people do that. If you're new to the channel, maybe just checking it out for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button. See more of this ridiculous nonsense. Until then, I'm Dave. Thank you, as always, for joining me in the wee hours, and we'll see you next time. I totally understand that. If I were visiting a restaurant and it was on fire, I, I probably wouldn't go there again. Not, not quickly, anyway. Not until I saw some more reviews on the place, and those reviews specifically said, place burns down much less than it used to. Oh, you have a migraine or a rattlesnake bite? Well, this is wicked simple, Linda. Have you been bitten by a snake? If the answer is no then it's a migraine. And, and my accountant's on fire. My accountant's on fire uh, because water plus electricity is bad. Robot, how do we rescue you? I, I, don't, I don't know how to rescue you. I'm also not sure I ever knew you were a woman.